Warning. This episode contains massive progress updates. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 45 of Let's Design CD Skylines. It's been two weeks since my last episode and I have to apologize for that. Uh, however, I think I can make it up to you on this one because there is so much I need to tell you and so much I need to show you actually that I just can't wait another second. First of all, I've been working heavily off camera on a project that, that's been, you know, long requested by many of you. Cedar Valley has now a new neighborhood and this, this is what it looks like. I'll get into the details of this project in a few minutes, but first, you might have noticed something different with the way Cedar Valley looks. The reason for that is that we're rocking, finally, a custom map theme, and we were trying to put this together for two weeks. And I say we, but in fact, most of the work has been done by a viewer who goes by the name of Mark Fire. He's from Brazil, and he offered uh, to give me a hand at creating a 4K resolution theme. Yes, the textures are really, really high def. Uh, you may also know Mark from the Steam Workshop, where a couple of weeks ago he published Montebello. Uh, it's a theme that was uh, it was actually featured on the Steam Workshop for 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 a little while. And uh, now, if you actually want to have the look of Cedar Valley in your own city, you no longer need to download the custom textures from my website, or or you know you can ditch terrain uh, terrain texture replacer oh god i can't believe i was i was using that just simply go to the description of this video look for the link uh and it basically you can just download the theme uh from the steam workshop i'm really really excited about this one again muito obrigado mark i know i drove you crazy with the past two weeks but you i mean you really knocked it out of the park it just looks gorgeous uh all along uh, i'm just amazed seriously and obviously uh, everyone else do not forget to uh rate the theme and, and leave your comments there as well they're very very much appreciated finally i need to give a huge shout out to sam sam ts uh, who is the creator of move it find road tools and the most uh, recent prop precision which i'm sure many of you already got it uh he messaged me right after the last episode where i asked the community uh, for some help regarding the cinematic camera mod uh, not only he delivered a working version in just a few days he pretty much fulfilled my entire wish list and then some like he actually spent extra time like figuring out what's the best way to do certain things and he just added features and keeps every time i load the game there's like new things in it so i'm just i'm really really amazed about that as well uh myself and other youtubers like addis fresh popcorn and press have been actively testing for a couple of weeks but now it's finally out so i'm going to include the link in the description of this video as well in case you want to create your own cinematics and i feel like this mod alone is just going to improve the lives of everyone of us who makes city skylines video again sam on behalf of the of the entire youtube community Thank you so much. Wow, that was quite the intro, but now it's time for me to show you in detail this brand new neighborhood that we have here. Um, I started uh, working on this about two weeks ago, actually. Actually, maybe three and a half weeks ago. Uh, I, I pretty much uh, cleaned up this whole area of the map because I was going to extend the, these farmlands all the way over here. By the way, I haven't really... Uh, told you this but uh, this is uh what we were working on in the previous episode i almost forget uh that uh, we did this but uh, i i added some decoration here i really really like it you saw you probably saw some cinematics at the at the beginning of the of the video but i i just wanted to point it out that i did indeed uh finish this but uh, going back to the farm stuff I, I'm, I'm going to be all over the place by the way today i mean with the new textures just all these amazing new mods it's just yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna be kind of crazy uh so as you can see here I cleared up this whole area and my idea was to extend these uh, farmlands pretty much throughout. So I might still do that, but uh, I just wanted to do like a little test run on this uh, little corner. And this is what I am imagining. As you can see, I pretty much have a grid going on here, pretty much all the way to the edge of the map. So we're going to be working on this uh, for a few episodes, as you can probably tell. But this will be the model for that and let's start from the from the little city so this is something that's been requested also for for quite some time for me to like start branching out and have smaller towns in the mountains uh this is pretty much you know on the foothills in the middle of this uh valley and just right by the river and this uh i mean i just i just went for like a really small not so dense but also not so sprawly 
uh, type of city. We have the, the main square over here, and then we just have a few houses. Uh, I started using the shady bushes, uh, you know, as, as like fillers, and I think they actually work much better than the pine trees. For some reason, I like them a lot more, so I might start using them uh, a bit uh, more than than the other ones. Like, check, check this out. This just looks gorgeous. I'm... I'm I'm so happy with how these turned out. And obviously I'm using like different textures. Uh, I specifically asked Mark to to have like custom textures for oil and for uh, ore. So if you if you look at here, I can just show you real quick. Let's increase the, the brush and let's go to like a farm uh, maybe here. So if you paint them, uh, in this case I'm using uh, fertile, right? Yes. And then I can use uh, oil and it will be like a slightly different texture and then I can just use uh, this and it will be slightly darker and you can also like mix it up with sand like so and uh, eventually you might want to use fertile on using surface painter so you can pretty much mix it up as you go uh, I'm gonna get rid of all this eventually I think I'm just gonna make it uh, I'm going to, you know, dedicate a whole episode to this. I, I have all the plans for this episode. In fact, this episode might be a little bit shorter because, uh, as you probably know, I'm I'm leaving town relatively soon and uh, I was unable to pre-record pretty much anything. Uh, I'm recording this very video like two days before it goes, uh, it goes live. So uh, there will be videos on my channel. Unfortunately, at this time, I don't think I'm going to be able to, you know, push uh, Cedar Valley videos. Arrowhead will still be uh, showing up every two, every three weeks. And uh, there might be, uh, there, there's gonna be a recap video for Arrowhead also on my channel in a couple of weeks, as well as some other videos that I, I have uh, in mind uh, that I wanna produce. They're not necessarily Cedar Skylines, but uh, there will be at least once a week a video on my channel. I, I do apologize for that, but I, I, I hope that I was you know able to record more things just scheduling doesn't doesn't help in any case um this is uh you know the look as i was saying even these uh, i i pretty much connected some roads so now we have this uh national roads pretty much cutting through our mountains and and zigzagging in many many places i just love how this whole valley uh turned out i'm sure you saw some of these in the cinematics uh Another thing that you may not notice uh, is uh, this. So we have the National Road coming out this way. And it connects to this uh, little, you know, simple interchange. I was really happy with it. And over here, it just goes across uh, the train tracks. And uh, it just happens to, you know, to be a train running, uh, running underneath, which is always good. And over here, we have another interchange that I was working on. This one is uh, needs a little bit more love. I mean, the other one is not detail or anything. I just needed the connection. Because as you may may see here, we have a road connection. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't do anything. Like, the, the only road connection that the game accepts is three lanes on each side. So even though I wanted a natural road to connect to the neighboring uh, town, this is the only solution that I have for that. But... Uh, we have now this uh, national road that comes from this angle and just goes all the way into the town. Then if you go, uh, I guess, north in this case, you will just uh, follow this path underneath the tunnel and all the way into this interjection, uh, intersection that goes across the dam that we built or the dam that we built uh, several episodes ago. By the way, take a look at the foamy effect on the water. Isn't this amazing? It's just beautiful. I love it. Um, and then this road connects back to the main road and uh, all the way into pretty much Cedar Valley, as you can see here. Uh, I had a problem, though. This road right here, uh, just uh, a few moments uh, before I started recording this episode, there was a, a traffic jam that was coming all the way to here, like a massive line of cars that was coming all this way. And the reason for that was that I had another neighboring connection over on this side. There seems to be a little bit of traffic here as well, but it got a lot better, and I'll tell you why in a moment. Uh, so, like I said, another connection here, and this is the one that we were just looking at a second ago. So now all these uh, networks are pretty much connected. As soon as I connected this, it pretty much decompressed some of the pressure here. I know I know these these interchanges, especially this this connection here, needs a little bit of work. There's a lot of cars making weird U-turns here. I, I am aware of that. I want to take care of it. But for now, I really like that design, and I'm going to keep it. In fact, there's another conflict uh, 
and this is more of, of aesthetic conflict than anything else. We have this uh, little overpass with the concrete blocks underneath. And the issue with this is that, you know, that just the slope is a little bit too steep. I don't like that. I don't like steep, steep uh, hills. So what I'm going to do is refactor this. I might do this in this episode if we have the time. And also we have this issue where cars are just making U-turns on this really sharp uh, things. So we'll, we'll see about that. Now, the major solution for the traffic problem that we had here was this bridge right here. So as you can see, I just, I mean, I didn't do anything. All I did was just drag a road and just connected it all the way to this, uh, to this uh, freeway right here. Really didn't care for anything, just connected it. And that pretty much diverted a huge portion of the traffic from here on the freeway towards Cedar Valley instead of having all this traffic be a uh, national road whoops, uh, following uh, the river. The thing is, I want a proper bridge. And the way I want to do this is uh, I, I want to, you know, I extended this uh, this train tracks over here, which, by the way, I, I think there must be something wrong uh, in the settings that I haven't really had time to check. Uh, Tim, uh, Tim the Terrell's uh, catenary replacer have it, and I know it works for one-way tracks as well, so I don't know why these are showing. I might have not checked a box or something, so I do apologize, team. I know you're like really serious about making everything look amazing, but uh, I will get that fixed for the next episode for sure. And uh, what I want to do here is the following. I want to have this bridge, which is a rail bridge, and uh, if possible, I want to mount the national road on top of this bridge. So it will be sitting on this metal structure. So it's going to be a little bit tricky, but I think we can pull it off. And uh, obviously we're going to have a bit of a interchange here. We're going to have tracks going under, going up, just making a few connections. So this will be the main uh, topic for this episode. And we might as well just uh, get started. First thing that I want to do is race it. First of all, I think I want to pause the game. because That usually makes things uh, much easier. So if we go like this, we can bring this up by about that much. And I think I can just simply do that. We have anarchy on, okay. Uh, this is gonna be tricky. We have to do it in, in segments, I think. In fact, I might need to, hmm. First of all, let's, let's do this. Let's grab the train tracks and bring them closer because uh, this will be somewhat important. I'm, a, I'm using uh, one-way tracks here. So just straight line like that. Get rid of some of these trees. And uh, I think right about here we should probably start curving. So let's go 15 units. And uh, something... Actually, that might be a bit too much. Let's go 10 units instead. Because at this point, I'm going to start... Uh, I'm going to start climbing up and we're going to connect it with a curve here. So, oh man, I have no idea how to plan for this. It's, uh, this is the, the issue with improvising things. So huh, on the fly, I mean, I know what I'm trying to do, but I haven't really plan came up with a plan for this design. So I do apologize for that as well. So let's see, actually, it's a good idea to just use this bridge thing first. Just to like get it. Oh, there we go. That's perfect, actually. That kind of works. How does that look? That looks rather interesting. It's a little bit too steep, though. You know what? I think I want I want the slope to be uh, to come from you know farther away. That way, it's just way more gentle, especially for trains. And this should give us a perfectly. That's a nice smooth slope going up. Perfect. All right. So at this point, we can hopefully easily connect the uh, bridge. No need to delete that now. I think I can uh, simply just uh, curve it like this. Maybe turn bending off. It's really, really interesting. What if we try that? So we have 11 by nine. Let's do this. Let's go this way and we're gonna go straight just for uh, for two units. There we go. And this should give us a perfect curve. So 
so nine by nine there we go fantastic so now we're gonna grab move it and we're gonna bring this down all the way down so it's perfectly flat there we go great and honestly we might be able to just get rid of that this is obviously still a bit too uh, tall so let's bring this down just a tad why are you not uh, going down i think i'm selecting the wrong thing here there we go fantastic i think this uh column should be a little bit down that way the textures don't really clip this one is actually okay i don't mind and uh here it's uh where it becomes a little bit tricky because I want a really gentle slope going down, and uh, why are we doing this uh, two tracks? If I if I make this one track, oh it uh, oh no, never mind. I guess we can do that. The problem is that uh, the the road will overhang on on each side, which might be a bit not super realistic. You know what? Let's go back to the two tracks. I actually like that much better. Let's uh, now maybe extend this, let's turn off Anarchy. Bring this down. Really, you wanna create a thing here? Okay. How does this look? This is all flat, right? It looks pretty flat to me. Fantastic, okay. So let's uh, grab this and now we're gonna force terrain down and we're just simply gonna bring it down like that hmm so it's a little bit too steep still so let's go like this in fact this is not turned on so let's give that a shot there we go that is much better that is much better by the way i already measure the clearance you'll see in a moment here the the the, the boat is about to pass and uh, I guess it kind of clips. Oh no! You know what? Let's let's raise this up. It, I I don't think I'll be able to live with myself <laughs> if this uh, if the boat doesn't go underneath uh, properly. So let's bring this up. Wow, that needs to be really tall in order for for that to not scrape the antennas. But it's good though. It's good. We made it. Okay, let's see if we can fix this easily. Perfectly straight slope going up. Fantastic. Couldn't couldn't be happier. Now in this case, uh, we'll just have to you know do that. In fact, maybe go even down another uh, another segment. And I think we just simply go down like this. Wow. Okay. I think we got it. I think we got it. Happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. Okay. Now. Question is, how the hell do we bring the bridge uh, or the national road over this? I think the easiest solution will be to just simply get the bridge in place. I think we're going to force elevate this and we're going to bring it up by about that much. Actually, I don't want any sort of uh, so elevated non-pillars or no pillars. And I think it makes sense to just build it on the side. I, I've done this before in an episode that of Arrowhead Junction that still hasn't gone up. So I can't really say a lot, <laughs> but uh, trust me, it will be it will be great. Okay, so we're gonna bring this up by about that much. Doesn't really matter because I will still have to use Move It to to put things in place. Slope too steep. There we go. All right. It almost looks like uh, this thing, this floating thing, almost looks like Trek Mania, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, where you just have floating uh, segments of uh, of track. Should probably do like a let's design Trek Mania. Whoa, this is interesting. Really, really gets crazy. It's okay though. We'll fix it. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Obviously, it's all super wonky, but uh, see if I can select a different node and. Uh, First of all, is this a line? Yeah, it is a line. All right, so let's bring this down. I'm not saying, I'm not gonna have it exactly like that, but I do want all these segments to to be flush against the uh, metal structure so that I know they're all 
at the same level. All right, so now I think we need to bring this up by about, maybe by about that much. Actually, you know what? A little bit higher wouldn't, wouldn't hurt. I think I want these two lines to like sort of meet. There we go. Perfect. I think that actually is exactly what I wanted. Uh, that is an interesting bridge, if I do say so myself. Let's grab, uh, let's grab another road segment here. Turn off, uh, move it. And uh, I have no idea how I'm going to connect this over here, but I do know that I, we need like, uh, actually, you know what? We can do a wide thingy. Oh my God, this is gonna be so great. Uh, unfortunately, I need to turn uh, Anarchy on here. Can we make that change? Wow. That is really a really interesting shape. Obviously we'll change this. So let's bring this down so that it matches the height that we currently have. This is quite the bridge, man. I mean, seriously. In fact, at this point, I can just start going down if I want to. I just love how it looks. So good. Even this this thing at the end. Oh man, we need to replicate that on the other end too if we can. Uh, okay, so I'm just getting, man, I'm just getting carried away by this design. Let's go back to the um, default ones, which is this small concrete, concrete, concrete. And uh, I might as well just, uh, oh no, please tell me I didn't destroy that. We want to be a little bit higher than the uh, train tracks at this point. So... I think something like that may work. And then just simply bring this down all the way to zero, zero meters. That doesn't look super bad. I think we can do a much better job if we just move it. But that's sort of the design that I was uh, hoping to achieve. In fact, this pillar over here already looks really, really nice. Let me bring the camera closer so you can see um, you know what? We might need to move these, uh, this double stacker thingies a little bit upward. So by about just barely touching the surface of the road. That way we have enough clearances, uh, or clearance, I guess, for the train. Wow. That's quite a, that's quite a design. Let's, uh, maybe bring this, uh, down just a little bit. The, the usual way of testing this is you just simply disengage, move it, and grab, I think it's AFT. We're gonna grab one of uh, Beesquigglehausen's uh, double-decker thingies, and we can actually see that this will scrape the uh, roof of these cars. Let me double check, but yeah, I don't think, uh, oh man, I think the clearance is just Barely enough, but not it, it wouldn't look good. So let's let's bring this up a bit. So I actually tweaked things a little bit. And originally the the double decker pillar was uh, oriented this way. So I moved it uh, so it's you know perfectly parallel with the train tracks. And uh, we have enough clearance now for the for the trains. And I also moved the pillars on this side and created another set of uh, double stack pillars over here as well. So all of this is pretty much good to go. One last thing I did, uh, I just polished this, uh, you know, this slope going down and obviously this uh, train tracks going down as well. At this point, they just go underneath the uh, the roads and I think we could just simply actually just connect this to uh, the neighboring city. I don't think I will, you know, that I will have it turn or anything. I'll just have them come like this. In fact, I don't know if I can just make this connection or actually, yeah, I can. There, there we go. Perfect. So this should start spawning some uh, trains every once in a while. Uh, I don't think we're gonna have any stations on this track because this one just curves around and it goes pretty much all the way into somewhere around here. I can't, I can't even remember. Is this track that goes underneath here, uh, comes from the tunnel. Okay, it goes all the way to the station. So it's mostly going to be passenger service. Hopefully we'll see a few uh, formations every once in a while. Do they, Do we have people here? We do not. Okay, doesn't matter. Uh, in any case, also created a small interchange, nothing too crazy, just uh, 
you know, very, very simple. I also put the uh, concrete underpasses and hopefully as soon as we start connecting this on this side, we will see some traffic. So I'm gonna take some time off camera. Basically what I wanna do is I wanna have two branches coming out each way and then we'll have two little turns so that traffic can easily merge in and out. So it's gonna be quite interesting, but uh, just give me a moment, I'll be right back. Now it's time for a little progress update. It's just uh, been tinkering with this uh, bridge for a little bit. Uh, not actually not that long, just a few minutes. And I came up uh, with this design and it just uh, happened to stop the, the simulation here as, uh, as the train was passing by. So let me just go outside and show you how beautiful this, this whole thing looks. So this is the entire span of this bridge. It looks pretty solid to me. I'm really, really happy with how it looks. And if we look over here, uh, I moved around some of these pillars. So now we have a bit of a, I mean, this wide concrete uh, pillar pretty much holds together both bridges. And as you can see, there's no clipping with the train, even though there's there's indeed clipping with the fences, uh, uh, just a little bit, uh, but you know, do, do not mind that. It's, uh, it's all good. And uh, I don't know, I'm just really, really excited. I think it looks great. It's definitely looking much more realistic. Uh, the pillars being offset and all that, I mean. And then on this side, let me just uh, go out of this uh, first person camera. I, I did a, a really simple layout here. I mean, this uh, this pretty much breaks out into this, uh, you know, this directions and this direction as well. So now that I'm thinking about it, there's a little bit of a redundancy here because if you're coming on this side, you could just simply take this road and go there instead of just going around this way. So I might as well just uh, tweak this a little bit on camera because why not? So let's turn arrows on. So I'm guessing if you're taking this route, I guess it has to be two ways, but might as well just get rid of this one and uh, this one. That way it's just uh, it just flows better. So now that we have that in place, I think we need to do two things. Uh, first of all, remove this bridge over here. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, there seems to be a lot of noise outside my window, so I do apologize for that in advance. I want to keep this uh, dirt roads here. I didn't really explain what these are. Um, actually, I forgot to explain one big thing. So these farms right here, uh, all of this, and these roads as well are on the same grid. And the grid is actually this one, like this, uh, this, the, this line that defines the three islands. It's, uh, I extended a road uh, and, you know, off camera and uh, created this whole grid based on this angle. So I'm hoping to, whatever we do here, and I do have a few plans, it's just gonna be based off of this grid and uh, everything will look hopefully uh, really, really nice. It doesn't mean that we're gonna do everything grid based like that, but just, uh, I don't know, just to make things uh, cohesive, I, I figured that would be a, a better idea. And man, this bridge looks awesome. I'm so happy with, with how this bridge is starting. It's really, really simple, but the fact that the train goes underneath and then the road kind of like, you know, skews away from from this uh, from this uh, straight line, it's just perfect. I love it. Okay, so next up, what we need to do is uh, add a few details. So might as well just jump on a quick time lapse and uh, see what we can come up with.
as we slow things down, just wanted to take a moment here to show you in detail the creation that we did on this time lapse, which by the way, we just went for, for a full music time lapse, which is a format that I haven't tried in a while. So just, I was kind of excited about that. Uh, in any case, let me just show you uh, some of the changes that I made. As you can see, I just added a lot of foliage uh, in between uh, these curves. Obviously, Jersey barriers protecting, you know, potential cars from like going on rolling down the, the down the cliff uh, obviously some chevrons here for good measure to like have the cars uh you know indicate where where the where they need to turn and i also completed some of the lines with uh just decals all over which i think uh they turn out great i wish uh i think someone uh is working on like lighter shade of white so it, it matches the actual roads a little bit better so i can't really uh be more specific than that because I don't know any more details, but I know it's coming. And another thing that I end up fixing, and I have to thank Tim the Turbo for this, uh, he, it turns out that I was using the old beta version of the Catenary Replacer. And it seems like that was the cause of me having just empty catenaries with no cables on this one-way tracks. He updated the uh, the beta version as well as... Uh, actually, I don't think he updated the production version, but the version that I was using got updated, and now this fixed the problem. So thank you, team, very much for that. If you don't know, uh, if you haven't gotten this mod yet, I highly recommend it if you want to get rid of all the cables or if you just want to switch the type of catenaries. He created some really good assets uh, some really good designs, so you should check it out. I'm going to include the link in the description to his Steam Workshop profile, and then that way you can uh, subscribe there. And then on the other side of this bridge, which, by the way, I just I just love how it came out. It's just, it's so simple, but I think that's that's what I like about it. It's just perfect. Couldn't couldn't have have couldn't have asked for a better for a better bridge. I can't even English right now. It's it's almost midnight here, and I need to edit this. And this is by the way the night before this video comes out, so I'm I'm kind of in a rush right now. Uh, but I just wanted to show you this uh, before I go. I just extended this fence here for security, and this super gradual 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 slope going up again. Also with the the trains, it's just perfect. Can, can be happier with how it turned out. Coming over here, <clears throat> a lot of vegetation uh, around the uh, this uh, really simple diamond interchange, which I've been using uh, quite a bit. And uh, I think it just fits most scenarios. It's, there's, is it easy to build? I, I wanna make other types of uh, interchanges too, but uh, for now, since time uh, was a bit of an issue for this one, I just decided to go with this design and I couldn't be happier with how it turned out. Here comes another train. Let me just uh, pause it right here. Just wanna take you down here. You can see the clearance is perfect. Even for the uh, super tall uh, passenger trains, I think uh, it fits fantastically well. And uh, what else? Oh yeah, and the other thing that I was working on is uh, this little interchange here, which I extended, so it's a little bit more fluid. Traffic can flow easily. There's less traffic backups. And again, just went for the same design with some like trees and foliage in the middle. I think, uh, I mean, just look at it from this angle. Isn't this beautiful? I think it, I think it came out great. Now, uh, I think, uh, yeah, I'm going to put an end to this episode because I, like I said a moment ago, I really need to, to start editing this uh, video and just putting it out there. It's going to take a while for rendering and for uploading. So it's, yeah, it's quite a bit of a process. I don't know when my next episode of Cedar Valley is. I just wanted to talk about that real quick before I go. I'm going to try to at least get one more video, like episode 46, that if I don't have time to to actually work or do any work on camera, at least I want to get you like some beautiful cinematics or like a, you know, like a tour, like a first person tour, which is something that many of you have been asking for quite some time. So hopefully I'll be able to do that. Uh, in the meantime, I think if, if I'm not able to, to post uh, more videos, the next Cedar Valley video will be at some point in early January. I have to apologize for that, but honestly, I just did my best to try to get videos out just didn't have the time. Arrowhead videos will still be already scheduled pretty much. So those are going to be coming out every three weeks on my channel and pretty much every week on Fluxes and Fresh. And I'm also going to do a big effort in trying to get a few videos on my channel as well during my time out of the country. They may not be City Skylines videos, but I'm going to try to... I have some ideas on, on some cool things that I want to make. So I'll, I'll give that a shot and uh, we'll see. we'll see what happens. 
And with that, I want to ask you to give this video a like if you enjoy, that's very much appreciated. And also if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. There's a link in the description to the full playlist in case you might have missed an episode. Also, do not forget to get this 4K theme. It's amazing. It just can't get can get enough of it. Just keep looking at all the details. I'm amazed by by the work uh, Mark Fire did. Just lovely, lovely work. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I want to thank you all for watching. I really hope to see you on the next one.